Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to the vlog. This is a heat dump and I've had it to pieces today. So you're joining me at around half past five, six o'clock in the afternoon. Just check that that's gone off. I'm waiting for this expanding foam to dry. So, long story short, let me climb down. I've sealed all the holes in here to make it more efficient when it pulls air through to cool the radiator which is fitted into the back of it then all the air has to come through the radiator essentially to get through the front of the fan now I took the whole thing out because I suspected the leak which I'll talk about in a second but actually I didn't farm one I pressure tested it up to 10 psi and held it there for an hour or so and it didn't change no leak on that side um, but there was lots of fluff and hair and whatever debris stuck to the back of the fins so I took it down and cleaned it so having come to the conclusion this is what's left of my test apparatus having come to the conclusion that there was no leak there I kind of thought well where is the leak coming from so we've had, you know, you might say, I found it, look, it's on the floor. I've had everything off. So all the side panels of this classic 1000 Cornelius cooler. And uh, I can't find a leak, apart from one little bit that I'll explain in a second. So this pump here is the recirc pump, which recirculates the liquid out of that tank, just at the side of it. And that tank is what contains your coolant and you should be using glycol in there realistically particularly in the winter but you can get away with normal water in the summertime so I've just been topping it up because we're not going to get a frost at the minute and uh, it goes from there from that research pump through a heat exchanger at the back now I can't show you the heat exchanger because I've put the sides back on but it's in there so trust me it exists and that heat exchanger is connected to the condenser on the compressor for this unit. So instead of going through a radiator as you would a normal compressor for a refrigerator or some type, it goes through a heat exchanger much like it would on a brew kit. It's much like a plate heat exchanger, in fact it is a plate heat exchanger but it's gas tight and it's brazed and it's sealed because obviously we're pumping a refrigerant through it and uh, refrigerant through one side for the compressor compressor the other side we have the cooling liquid and then from there it gets forced through one of these lines out to the heat dump that we've seen outside where it loses its heat through convection from the fan blowing through the coils and then it comes back in hopefully a lot cooler than it went out it's still pretty warm though and as you can see the compressor then pulls a massive ice bath in here which I normally have set to minus 5 but because we've got it turned off it's now at 8.3 degrees the reason it's at 8.3 degrees is because we have everything running all seven of these cold rooms are running at the minute. This one's at 12 degrees. This one's at 12 degrees. You'd imagine these two would be balanced, which they are. And then this one is at 9.1, which is the hop store. That will start to climb. All these will balance at some point because we don't have any active cooling going on. So, where's this leak coming from? I suspect that we don't have a leak. I think what's happened during the winter, because I only noticed this recently since the weather's been warming up, I thought oh, I'll check my coolant levels as you do and the reservoir tank was almost dry. It still had some liquid in there but it was almost dry. And I think what's happened is when the whole system reaches its set temperature, the compressor, the pump, the whole shebang, turns off of course 
That never happens in the summer because we're actively cooling all summer long. But in the winter, it occasionally will close down. Therefore, all the coolant in these pipes, which are a good 10, 12 feet higher than this system, are then under gravity and they want to push back down. And this lid had in it a hole, a breather, which I've sealed up now by heating a knife and just smudging over the uh, hole. So all this liquid here was from when I filled the reservoir back up and turned the pump on and lo and behold when I turned the pump back off again after it had taken all the liquid in I came in here and it was squirting it was squirting out that hole and I managed to catch a fair bit of it but not all as you can see so I think what's happened in the winter is when I've turned the unit off or when it's turned off when it's reached temperature it's sprayed the coolant out I've not noticed it it's happened at night it's evaporated, it's dried, it's done it bit by bit and then when the pump's turned back on because the level is now lower it's pulled it back in and it looks to the untrained eye we have a leak somewhere I've literally tested every single pipe I cannot find a leak in the system that little pinhole in there is the only explanation I can come up with so there we are that's all there is to it now I was waiting for that expanding foam to go off so when I turn this on it's going to want to suck that expanding foam into the fan area shall we risk it? why not? so there we go so now if we looked in here I just heard a little bit of a vacuum then that liquid level, which you can't tell because I can't really see it is now starting to drop it was right up at the brim a minute ago, it's now down to about here so we'll just let that pull in and then we'll stick that back on and then we're going to go outside and we're going to have a look if our fan sucked in the sides oh no, beautiful, it hasn't so the expanding foam seems to have gone off enough to have resisted being pulled in and we have we can certainly see the fan we have air circulating so that is sorted I'm happy to say that the heat dump is working and functional again and I'm hoping that the Cornelius cooler will get some more years out of her so temperature was 8.3, it's just dropped to 8.2 and I don't know if I can see on the side, no, the label must have been on the back this machine was commissioned in 2004 so it's pretty old so the fact that it's still kicking is testament to the build quality of these Cornelius coolers 8.1 we are cooling now, that's good news. So I'll be quite intrigued to see tomorrow morning when I come in if it indeed has pulled all seven of these rooms down. And if I just open this one here, am I zoomed in like a numpty? I apologize, but if I open this one, when we drag, as you can see, it's rather convenient. Then we're in the process of moving all the can stock into a rack that we've got in here, so it's all chilled. And this bit here is our secondary cooling. So I know it's a little bit difficult to see, but we essentially have a in here and that is taking the heat from 
the cold room itself, let me just come out, that's taking the heat from the cold room and uh, carting it via another glycol recirculation pump down to the cooler. And just to give you an idea, that's what this pump is doing at the top. So that pump there running 110 from here. So this is controlled separately. So we're powering that pump there. That pump is controlled by the cold room controllers. We've got this 12 volt transformer on the wall. That's powering the 12 volt car fans. That's what we've got going on in there. They're car radiator fans. And they are indeed car radiators. And uh, that's all being controlled by an STC 1000 inside that box. And that's perfect, does the job exactly as we want it to. So there's a quick rundown anyway. New cold rooms in position. Um, just in case you're thinking, oh, what well, if you, this unit doesn't cope with cooling all seven of these rooms, don't worry, I've got another one on order. Brand spanking new one. So hopefully it will do the job and we can save that one for running one or two of the rooms and we can plumb the, plumb the new one in. I'm hoping the new one will do all of them actually, but we'll plumb the new one in and that should come with a warranty, so that should last us for many a year. If that Cornelius one has lasted since 2004, you'd hope a brand new one will do the same kind of mileage. They're not cheap, they're over a grand for the big ones, but uh, I thought I'd better buy a new one because, well, we're going to have a lot of stock in here this summer and I don't want it going south on me. Anyway, there's an update folks. Just a short one today because I'm going to be going home soon. But I thought I'd keep you in the loop. So cheers. We'll see you on the next one.